So good morning. Welcome to Krishna's classroom. I am Krishna. Well, let us continue with the second part of uh, the lectures on Riemann's series in Tech. So briefly recall the notations. So let be a compact by which you mean closed bounded sub interval Let f be a real valued function on a b such that f is bounded, f is bounded, then alpha is is a monotonically increasing function from which it follows that alpha is bounded. We would uh, put in more uh, assumptions as and when we require them. These are the general assumptions that we make. <coughs> we are not assuming alpha to be continuous. In fact, under these conditions, one can show that we can have at most Countably many discontinuities. That's about alpha. On F, we will put more conditions as and when we require it. So we use this condition. So we write F belongs to R alpha. That is, F is Riemann integrable with respect to alpha. This is a Riemann series integral of this. If and only if, this is the point. See what we have defined earlier? U, P, F, alpha, minus L, P, F, alpha, there exists a partition P, a P of A B. That is something like B equal to or A equal to less than X one. This is the there exists a partition P on P such that U P F alpha minus L P F alpha is less than. This is a 
criteria and maybe we look at this uh, explicitly so that we get some insight into what we should do while proving that the given f belongs to R. Okay, so what do we do? So what is this u p f alpha minus l p f alpha? This is equal to sigma i equal to one to n. mi minus small mi into alpha xi minus alpha minus minus one. Where mi is you put the supremum sign of f of x and small m i equal to minimum of x belonging to minus 1 x i of both infimum and supremum x's so we are talking of one bit function ok for ok so let us see the picture of this what you have a this is equal to x naught x1 x i minus 1 x i x m minus 1 equal to b and the supremum of m i is here and the infimum m minus a. So that's what it is. So this is this in the natural tensor of the operation. Okay. Right. Now what have we proved? See, we defined Riemann integral if and only if this is true. Now let us see. So what you need is to show that this inequality is valid for a given choice of epsilon. That means given an epsilon positive, there exists a p such that this is true. So it amounts to controlling this and making it arbitrarily small which means that each one of this or the product of mi minus mi into alpha xi minus alpha xi minus 1 for all i from 1 to n has to be made small okay so that involves two factors so you you have two factors to play around with us one is this mi minus mi, the other one is going to be alpha xi minus alpha xi minus 1. Okay, so it is enough to make, and you know that both these are bounded, these numbers are all bounded, because this is bounded by 2m, where m is the bound for f, and this is also bounded by 2k or something like that where k is the bound for alpha x ok so that is assured so this is bounded the sum is finite that is assured now what we need is we should be able to make the product small which 
amounts to saying that one of the factors can be controlled and made as small as we please. Either mi minus mi should be made as small as possible on the interval xi minus 1 to xi or alpha xi minus alpha xi minus 1 can be made as small as you please. Okay. Now you see that both of them can be controlled by assuming continuity on that interval. If you assume continuity of f on the interval xi minus 1 to xi, see, you know that if f is continuous, then f is uniformly continuous and then you can, given epsilon positive, you can choose a delta such that if the interval length is less than delta, then mi minus mi is going to be less than epsilon. So also, okay, if alpha xi minus alpha xi minus 1 is continuous on the interval xi minus 1 to xi, you can adopt the same kind of thing. Okay, therefore, on the other hand, suppose both f and alpha has discontinuity at a point. Okay, suppose y is a point belonging to xi minus 1 x i. Okay. Now with that and part you can take what is inside or you can be even more. Then what you are going to see is that if f is discontinuous at y, so we we'll take so the point here, so that is an interior point. You can always choose the partition such that this point of discontinuity is inside that. Then you see that mi minus mi cannot be made arbitrarily small because at y there is going to be a problem. Okay? Right. The second because it depends on what is the what is the what is the quantum of discontinuity that you have at y. Similarly, for alpha xi minus alpha xi minus 1. So even if you choose the interval length small, see eventually this is something that you have to work with. In the limit you may have to work, I will do an example soon. Uh, it will be around the point y where both alpha and f are having discontinuities. In that case, this will become, this cannot be the product, cannot be made arbitrarily small. So, in that case, your uh, expectation that this can be made arbitrarily small by choosing a partition would fail. Okay, so that is one single observation that you made, but essentially, all your techniques of proof should be should be for making this product small. That's just a remark. So we start with this, and we have seen, we have done. Now you recall the the proof of the result where we assumed that if f is belonging to, so we proved that this is the last year that we proved f. Then alpha. That means C A B is contained in R alpha. Like this. Yes. Okay. Right. This we have proved. There you had the luxury of the continuity of f to make this term small. So we didn't have to do a make any further assumption on alpha. Okay. So that you just uh, recall the proof of this and just go back and have a look at the proof. How we have controlled the crucial terms.
Now we make another observation. And put it as a theorem. If f is monochromatic, with finitely many, with finitely many discontinuities, and same for all choice of xi. What we assert is that alpha xi minus alpha xi minus 1, the difference is equal for all. So we choose this. So we have now a, a m to play around with and to make this arbitrarily small because this is fixed. This can be made arbitrarily small by choosing n sufficiently large. You do that. This is possible. Let that is where we use the continuity of alpha. If monotron. implies mi equal to f of xi see monotonic increasing and small mi equal to because what you have is this F is something like this. So this is the minimum value, this is the maximum value. So this is uh, this. So 
So the maximum and minimum are attained at the end points. Okay. In my Okay. Right? Therefore, now estimate this, this one. So u, p, f, alpha minus l, alpha. This is, you see, since the, the delta alpha is the same for all i, so you have this is equal to alpha b minus alpha a divided by n that comes out as a common factor Large enough so that this is made as small as this. So given epsilon, choose your partition such that this you are choosing. This is less than epsilon. Okay. Therefore, this is less, or uh, you choose this as less than epsilon divided by. So that completes it. So you have to also So that completes the proof of Okay. So we see that there are there are abundantly many functions in R alpha under the conditions that we have seen. Let me explore this further. Okay. Now, as I said, the crucial factor that you have to work on is this that is alpha x i. into this is the crucial factor that we will have to estimate in our work <coughs> okay so let us see what happens to this uh, when And see, let us look at some example where the problem of controlling this becomes visible. So let us take the following example. Choose the following function. So you choose alpha x define. So you take the interval to be equal to minus 1 to that. So alpha x I define as the form. This is equal to equal to 1 or 0 for minus 1 x down into zero and this as half 
at x equal to 0 and this as 1 for x belonging to the open interval, uh, sorry, the open end 0, 1. Okay. So the graph of the function is something like this. Minus 1 for 1 and this is 0. The function is taken to be 0 here and 1 on this and the value of the function here is so this is the graph of the function this is your alpha x now such an alpha is this Monotonically increasing means uh, it is actually monotonically non decreasing. That's it. If x less than y, then alpha x is less than or equal to alpha y. Okay. Now we take f to be. fx continuous on minus 1 to what happens? Now you see that, look at this factor, take a partition, so you choose a partition of minus 1 to 1 because the point where you are having problem is at 0. Okay. So let us take a partition. So this equal to x naught, take x1, take x2, take this as x1. And write down, and you can choose x1, x2 as something like minus delta 2 plus delta. So you can even choose x1 equal to minus delta, x2 equal to plus delta. That's also possible. Okay. So let us write down this all. So in this case, now you see the, the, the terms that come up are, you see that alpha x0 is equal to alpha x1 equal to 0 alpha x2 equal to alpha x4 equal to 0. So only this particular factor contributes. So you see that u, p, f, alpha minus is simply equal to uh, M1 minus M1 into what is the what is that you have? So this is equal to alpha x1 alpha x2 minus alpha x1. And this is immediately whatever. Right. Now you know that this is equal to one into one. Therefore, you see that this sum can be made arbitrarily small using the continuity of f. So what you do is so. Because you know that since f is continuous on the interval a b or minus 1 to plus 1, f is uniformly continuous. Therefore, given epsilon, there exists delta positive such that 
get this link small enough okay so the place the points of discontinuity are to be put inside the you know intervals and made the intervals small if f is continuous you can control that product over every such interval okay. now let us explore the situation where we assume no question so this is the case 1 2 
Now what is this? This is equal to what we have chosen here. So the function is chosen to be have value half key. Okay. So if you are uh, working on this, see, as x1, x2 moves towards 0 from this side and x3 moves to, okay, x1 moves from the left to 0 and x2 moves from the right to 0, what you get, what you end up with will be just the difference there, which is So what do you get? If f is discontinuous at 0, this cannot be made arbitrarily small. So the discontinuity of Because you see that the function, the m minus m cannot be made out of this. That's the problem. Right? Therefore, this is uh, true. In fact, I think I should write here. This is the same as m minus. So that's the problem. So this really uh, makes a function, you cannot get f does not belong to, so therefore f does not belong to. On the other hand, if f, f is a continuous function, you can always do it. Continuity will assure you that these are equal, therefore, it can be made up of this interval containing that point of discontinuity. Keep that in mind. 
And then I think I want to make some more remarks about it later. Uh, one remark I want to make is this. Let us assume alpha is okay, alpha is continuous from the right equal to zero, not the alpha that we have defined, but not continuous. means a for a for zero plus a for zero a for zero minus is not equal to a for zero. Okay. Now I leave it to you as an exercise that if f is See, you have discontinuity from the left. If f is continuous, sorry, it's not about alpha. It's not about alpha. So we assume alpha has is discontinuous. Now, if f is continuous. If f is continuous from the left and possibly discontinuous, <coughs> discontinuous from the right. That is f of zero minus equal to f of zero, but f of zero plus is not equal to f of zero. Then F belongs to okay. that is possible. For example, we modify here in the, in the previous example. So what we do is, see from minus 1 to 0 to 1, we take fx to be this. So we are assuming f is discontinuous here, but continuous from the right. So the function is defined to be 1. So here we have defined so this is alpha. So alpha f, see alpha x equal to 0 for x belonging to uh, minus 1 is 0 and equal to 1 for x belonging to 0. But f satisfies these conditions. Then f does not belong to, okay, then f belongs to r alpha. So what, what I mean to say is that if both alpha and f cannot have the same type of discontinuity, okay, if one is continuous from the right, the other one should be continuous from the left. 
at the point of discontinuity. Okay. Then you can control the product because one of the factors will be always controlled using using the, the continuity that you have there. All that you will have to do is in that case is I give a hint. What you do is you choose a partition which is something like this x0, x1, x2, this is 0, x3, x3. So you have two intervals to reckon with and then work out the sum on that and control each of the now there is an example in ruling of this kind of system. I, maybe I will give you that example. So I give this as an exercise. Do this. So we take here general assumption that F0 plus E. So you are assuming f is continuous from the left and f is discontinuous from the right. In this case, f belongs to R and R. Suppose x equal to 0, alpha minus equal to alpha 0 alpha and such that yeah That means if both alpha and f have the same type of discontinuity, then you will find it difficult to control this, this uh, product. Okay? So I leave it at that. Okay? So that is about the this uh, situation. Now let us uh, now go further. So we prove the following. Theorem is suppose. Thank you. 
Two that is the assumption. R will be and alpha is is continuous at every point at which F is discontinuous then is that F is bounded, has finitely many points of discontinuity on AB. Alpha is continuous at every point where the function F is discontinuous, then F belongs to half alpha. So that is uh, any improvement of the reason. Now so the proof is simple, it is a matter of controlling the uh, partial sum. Because you have to manage the points of discontinuity, which you know is uh, difficult to control, and how to control it, you will have to use the use the continuity of uh, you will have to use the continuity of alpha at those points. So wherever f is discontinuous, you fall back on the continuity of this uh, alpha. Okay. So let us work out the proof. So let supremum of A. Now let us isolate the discontinuities. So let E denote. The set of all x belonging to A B <coughs> such that F is discontinuous at x. From the given condition, E is E is a finite set. So you can assume the points are x1 star, x2 star, etc, xk star or something like that. That is it. Now alpha is given to be continuous at all points of E. So what we do is, you see, something like this, you have AB, let me take an X star, point of discontinuity, you just put this in some UI EF, inside some interval UJ, UJ, back it in some interval UJ, okay. <coughs> we can cover the every point of this can be with your
f by disjoint intervals by finitely many disjoint intervals. Finitely many disjoint intervals. A discrete set of points, so you can always you can always uh, see the set of points. So we set this one set of points that you can easily do. There is no problem because it's a matrix. We also choose such that alpha vj is less than or is less than. Now we remove the open segments. K 
que f continues which implies f is uniformly continuous on k therefore which implies such that for s belonging to k and mod s minus t less than delta. This is possible. So we use the uniform continuity on the on k. <coughs> now what we do is we fix the partition. Okay. So we choose a partition P such that UJ occurs UJ occurs What does it mean? Means you have a partition that you have already chosen. So you have encased, enclosed each of these points of discontinuity in some uj, vj. So that uj occurs in your partition P, vj also occurs in the partition P, and uj and vj turn out to be the, the adjacent points of the partition. Okay. So that's the meaning of that. So you have a situation like this. See, uj, vj. So there is a discontinuity somewhere here. And this is equal to sum xk minus 1. This is then equal to xk. Something like this. And also such that the 
if x i minus 1 is not equal to int a for some, then you have got delta alpha i which is equal to alpha x i minus alpha minus 1. This is less than that is possible because you see that if this is not equal to uj then you see that you are you are working inside uh, the the k which is devoid of all discontinuities of f and there you have assumed f is uniformly continuous and therefore you uh, you, you keep you can keep this arbitrary small by keeping xi minus xi minus 1 sufficiently small. Okay. So, okay. so I think, uh, sorry, I think, uh, such that, sorry, not delta and phi, such that delta xi, that is equal to xi minus xi minus 1 is less than which implies alpha is less than that is because of the compactness compactness of the complement of uh, you know the, the union of this dj dj's and uh, alpha being uniformly continuous on that. Okay. So we have the following. So we have now m i minus m i is less than or equal to m. There is nothing. It's a supreme moment if you know both are equal. We bound it by capital M, therefore we get less than or equal to M for every And you also have Mi minus Mi less than or equal to epsilon unless U unless uh, X I minus 1 equal to uj or some g. So what you are uh, doing is you are making this sub-intervals into two classes. Okay, The sub-intervals that contain the points of discontinuity and the sub-interval that does not, the sub-intervals that do not contain points of discontinuity. And everywhere I think this is less than or equal to 2 m. But if you consider only intervals, subintervals, which do not contain any uh, point of discontinuity, then you have xi minus xi minus 1 less than delta, and you have f uniformly continuous, and we have chosen delta related to the epsilon. Therefore, you get uh, mi minus small mi less than epsilon. So that is the statement of this. Therefore, we now estimate this. <coughs> so let us estimate this. So you have u p f alpha minus alpha. This is less than or equal to see alpha b minus alpha a into epsilon plus 2m epsilon. So what you have is this. See this sum.
now if xi minus sorry xi minus 1 xi is an interval which contains a discontinuity of f then you cannot make this mod but this is less than or equal to 2m but you see that because of the continuity of alpha <coughs> and having made the choice of <coughs> delta you have uh, alpha xi minus alpha xi minus 1 less than epsilon that is why you get 2m epsilon here so it comes from that term. the remaining part what you have is that the total sum is I mean mi minus small mi is less than epsilon ok because of our choice of uh, intervals and uh, using the continuity of f on that portion and you have uh, this is less than epsilon and this part the sum of that you pull that epsilon out and take the sum and this total sum is going to be less than alpha b minus alpha a so you get alpha b minus alpha a times epsilon plus 3 of epsilon that's all since epsilon is r vector worried about a factor here because what is this this is equal to alpha b minus alpha a plus 2m times epsilon see given alpha alpha b minus alpha a is a fixed number and m is also a fixed number therefore this is a constant this is a constant so something like uh, say a constant uh, say something like a constant m prime times epsilon something and like where m prime is possible okay now what one does is that as epsilon goes to zero m prime epsilon also goes to zero or right from the beginning you can start choosing and if you start working with an epsilon prime then you will end up with the m prime epsilon prime set this equal to epsilon ok so you start with an epsilon then work out everything for this one ok all of these results you work out with this and where epsilon prime is chosen as epsilon divided by m prime where m prime is this. so start with an epsilon choose epsilon prime such that epsilon prime equal to epsilon by m prime I mean those who are very very concerned about the constant sitting as a factor here otherwise it is symmetrical so always you remember this can be done <coughs> okay so the desired result forms I think uh, this is a nice place to stop and I will continue with this further. Yes. So maybe I thought that maybe do one or two proofs of theorems very, very explicitly so that you get a feeling of how you work on problems we have to do. Okay. So I think I will stop here. Thank you very much.